All right, y'all, I'm back. This is Miss Candy Rain, and uh, can we can we talk? Do y'all mind if we talk? In this video here, I am going to discuss, um, let's just have some surgery talk. Let's have surgery talk. I'm talking HGTT surgery talk. And for those of you who do not know what HGTT stands for, it's the Hourglass Tummy Tuck. Most of you have already tuned into my channel, so you already know that I had an hourglass tummy tuck from um, Dr. Michael Gray in West Bloomfield, Michigan. So basically, um, I did start going over a few things, um, and I gave you a couple of little tidbits in my last video. But um, like I said, I wasn't really into detail about um, just what was going on, what was happening with me and my body and my surgery. Um, in this video, I am going to give you a little bit of pricing, um, just some overall prices of some, some of the procedures. Once again, I want to stop and I want to state that his pricings change. They change usually monthly, but he does have them changed. It could be weekly. It could be daily. So for the best um, pricing and to get the pricing that is for you and your particular procedures that you are looking to have done... You definitely need to contact his office, and from there, they're going to give you a consultation. I don't even believe they go over pretty much pricing with you until you have your consultation because, you know, your body may require uh, things that are different than just saying, hey, you're going to get an hourglass tummy tuck. You may need some other things um, done as well. And so they will go over pricing with you for your particular procedures that you're going to have or that you're going to need to have at the office i wanted to reiterate that i am going to go over some overall pricing but you do need to um, contact the office for pricing okay so let's start with that and without further ado we're going to get to some okay so as far as pricing goes um i'm just going over the pricing over the procedures that i have done uh and i'm going to start with the tummy tuck um, it was originally priced at $5,800. Um, when I went, it was $5,220. The pricing for back liposuction or your bra line liposuction was $1,950 originally priced. When I went, it was $1,755. Liposuction of the waist originally priced is $2,050. I went, it was $1,845. And then your hips was $1,950. When I went, it was $1,755. Now, let's talk a little bit. So anesthesia is separate. He has a separate anesthesi anesthesiologist or anesthesia team. So um, it starts off with the tummy tuck or anesthesia started off with the tummy tuck at $700. And then it was two, and then it was $200 for a liposuction area. So that's $900 plus $100 for any other area um, additional. So I had my waist and my hips also. So that was an extra $200. So $100 for the waist, $100 for the hip. So that was $1,100 in total um, for anesthesia. And then you pay that separate to the anesthesiologist team, which, um, which is the cosmetic anesthesia staffing. So that was that for me, um, and that's pricing for those procedures. Now, let's get into it. Um, first day I came home from having surgery, um, I was pretty out of it. I don't really remember too much. I don't even actually remember. I remember uh, getting help into the car, but I don't even remember actually really getting to the house i do remember walking up the first step to get in the house and then walking down the steps to go uh where i was going to go in the room that i was in so i do remember that um wasn't no pain obviously the anesthesia was still in my body and then um i think i had pain meds as soon as i got home so um i do want to say take the pain meds when you first get them and take them on time. You do not want to be... They give them to you for a reason. Why put yourself in unnecessary pain? So they are prescribed. It tells you when to take them on the pill bottle. Not only that, before you leave, the the, uh, the nursing staff will actually tell you who's ever taking care of you exactly pretty much when to give them to you and how to give the pain meds to you. So 
Um, I know my husband set an alarm clock and he literally was waking me up every time it was time to take my pain med. So I wouldn't be in any unnecessary pain. So when I say I was not in pain, that's probably what I mean by I was not in pain. I stayed on my medication. So I really didn't feel anything. I did feel the tightness um, from having muscle repair. I did feel all in my abdomen area. It was, it was very tight. Like I said, to cough or, or anything like that. Um, I did get sick the first night and that's because I did not eat. So I, I always stressed, you know, you have to feed your medicine. You have to eat. So you need somebody who's going to stay in your butt about trying to get something in. Um, that was not fun. Mm -mm. Being sick was, was terrible. Like I remember me looking at my husband. I was like, just I'm about to end it all. Like this is the end of the world right here. Like it did that hurt more than any parts of the procedure for me. Um, so <laughs> throw that yeah, anybody the vomiting is was not it. <laughs> um using the bathroom when I first got home. Okay, so uh well I'll use this chair for an example. Um so I'm binding it up right now and I, I'll let you see that too. So see. And yes, I have my garment on underneath here. And look, you guys, I have on jeans. They have a stretchy band, but I have on jeans. I gotta show you. Sorry, I'll get right back to it in one minute. But I have to show you. Ooh, look at that hourglass, honey. See? Boom. 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 No love handles. Smooth. And that's my back. This is my back. No back rows. I'm so excited. So I'm happy about that all the time. And look at that. I have a nice little curve back here now. So that's, if you can see, I'll move a little bit close, a little bit further away so you can see. But there we go. But anyway, so back to what I was stating about the bathroom. Um, Using the bathroom at first was kind of difficult. I had help every time I, uh, for the first, uh, 48 hours, every time I used the bathroom, I did, um, at first take down all garments as well. Um, just because I wasn't comfortable using the urinal thing at first. Um, so we took down all the garments, but like I said, I had help. So that's how I did it. And when I would use the bathroom, um, I didn't have a toilet seat riser. And as most of you know, I'm very short. So I would literally back up to the toilet and just go down really slow. My uh, sister-in-law, she had like a little bar thing over here. So I would use that. And, and Or some whoever's helping you can ease you down really slow. And that's, I use the bathroom just like that. Um, it's so tight. So it is kind of uncomfortable to use the bathroom a little bit because you're so tight, um, especially at first. So, um, that was using the bathroom number one, obviously. Um, I stayed on top of, uh, that entire day as well. I took Sienna. Sienna is a laxative. It's, it's actually a stool softener. I took Sienna, the stool softener and laxative. I also took Miralax, Miralax, um, especially every morning and, and at night. So, um, and then I drank laxity which has Sienna in it as well. I just, I didn't want anything to clog up at all. And I wanted to come out as smooth as possible. So when I had my first bowel movement, I do believe it was probably about within that 48 hour, two day um, time frame, And I had no issues, came out smooth. Get a bidet, get a bidet. You know, uh, a lot of us, I'm not saying like you're, you're insecure or whatever, about anybody wiping you but you know who really wants that i'm not old enough for that <laughs> and i'm not a baby so i the bidet was everything everything i literally it, shh, and you're clean so get a bidet um if you're gonna have any surgery like this whether you're using the, the surgeon that i went to or not get a bidet it will have it will make your life so much more simple because it washes both areas. You can get the feminine wash, the one with the, the knob, so you can do a feminine wash as well as your bottom. So get up a day. <laughs> it made life uh, definitely more um, 
more easy. So anyway, so let's say now we're at our 48 hour mark and now it's time to shower because I had liposuction. You could not shower for 48 hours. Now, if you're just having a traditional tummy tuck, I believe you can shower um, pretty much any time after that. I, I Don't quote me because I didn't just have the tummy tuck. I had additional uh, procedures as well. So for me, the 48 hour mark is when I could shower. Now, when they say shower, I don't mean you, you're in there and you, you, you're full, <laughs> fully normally showering because you got to remember you, you're on all type of pain medication. So I did need the shower chair. The shower chair was, was big for me. Um, I was weak. So, and it's probably because more so the medication, but if not, you know, your body's going through a lot of changes too. So you're extremely exhausted and weak. Um, I didn't have pretty much any energy. So I had help getting into the shower. And then, who, as soon as that water hit me, when it came down and it hit me, it was like, thank you, Jesus. Because you're so sore. You're, um, you're sore, you know, especially, I don't, like I said, I didn't just have the tummy tuck, but um, with, with liposuction, your back is really sore and tight. So just letting that water warm, well, my water is hot, but letting that hot water hit me, um, even in the front, in the front where you have that muscle repair, it's really tight and um, kind of uncomfortable a little bit. So just letting that water hit there, that, that, that hot water hit it. It, it was like, I could just stay in here all day long. Um, but yeah, so I washed with my Dow soap. You you need to use antibacterial, antibacterial soap. Dow soap is what is recommended. Um, I also use Hibiclean as well. Hibiclens as well. So, um, and then wash myself with that. Um, now, when I washed in the shower... I didn't go do my incisions. I just, you know, used the soap, went over important areas, underarms, you know, the upper body pretty much. I can't, you can't bend down to get your, your feet. You can't bend down to wash your feet. There's no bending at all. So you're not really going to be able to really do your legs. Um, I didn't even do my, my feminine areas. I had help. I, um, I absolutely couldn't do those areas. Not, not get it clean. So I just literally use the showers for relaxation and just getting my upper body and more so just um, allowing that water to do its thing and kind of um, soothe my achiness, soothe my discomfort. And it definitely helps with that. Um, so once I was done with that, it was time to clean my incisions. Who taking off those bandages the, for the first time from liposuction? When they say the first 48, yeah, it's pretty messy. Um, you leak a good amount, so it is pretty messy taking a taking off those those bandages the first time. Um, possibly even the second time. You leak pretty bad. At least I did. So um, definitely have you you know have your stuff ready too. I will say that have your pads ready or whatever you're gonna use your gauze or your gauze ready if you're gonna put Vaseline on the gauze then have them ready. It makes your time go by because listen, you're already going to be kind of weak. So standing up for long periods of time and then your back is very, your back does hurt um, a lot, especially for, if you have a liposuction in the waist from being so tight and it's trying to stand up, it's a no-go. So have your stuff as readily prepared as possible. Um... Okay, so now it's time to wash my incision. My my husband pretty much helped me do that and my sister-in-law. So when it was time to wash the incision, you just lightly go over it, maybe circular motions or and kind of dab it, but you don't need to fully scrub it. You, you're not going to scrub those areas. Do not scrub it. Don't fully like think you're about to wash like your skin. No, you just lightly kind of go over it enough that, you know, you know, it's kind of clean from whatever kind of gook or whatever's on there. And then you let, you put a nice glob, a nice amount of Vaseline all around that incision. Now for the drain site, I will say this about the drain sites. Keep your drain sites free of crust. Once it kind of crusts up a little bit, it will hurt really bad. So try to keep that as free as possible 
clean, clear as possible. And then put a lot of Vaseline around that too, around that little hole. And um, it will definitely help you. I had zero problems with my drains. So um, that's a that's a nice tidbit for you. Um, and then once you get your incision all Vaseline up, that's when you put your gauze around it. Um, you can either use the roll gauze where you put them all around or, or pads. Um, pads work great. It also gives you the extra layer of protection. So pads do poise pads uh, more than likely because they hold more leakage. So <clears throat> they work great over the lipo holes, all that. So definitely get you some uh, medical tape so that you can tape that stuff on to you. And uh, it doesn't take tear off your skin. So medical grade tape is what you would need. Paper tape is another um, phrase that you can, you can use. Um, also, a lot of people have asked me um oh actually let me go back just a little bit but so as far as my incisions i did notice that for liposuction um and i would believe that's the incisions probably for the lower waist that leaked the longest and that's because it was i think more so at the bottom so those those took a while to actually fully close up for me um i don't think it probably fully closed up to about so, um, that's that with that. Um, sleeping in a recliner. A lot of people have asked me about sleeping in a recliner. So when you sleep in a recliner, you're kind, you're at a 45 degree angle. So you're pretty much like this. Your, your feet are just propped up and the back is up. You can go back just a little bit. Um, you can put you some pillows right up in there, wherever your, your kneecaps will be at just for some more support. Um, let's, let's just face it. You're sleeping in a recliner. It's like sleeping in a chair. It's not the best situation but you got to do what you got to do so you so that you can heal properly um i wasn't really worried about <laughs> sleeping in the recliner um i just was more so about worried about some romas and blood clots and uh pulmonary embolisms which i didn't want um and my incision opening uh necrosis those things i didn't want those things so i'm like listen what i gotta do he tells you up front anyway of what everything you'll need to do. And then you can make a decision, yay or nay. If we're sleeping in the recliner is not for you, then maybe this procedure will not be for you. Um, to me, it is necessary. A lot of people, they'll sleep on the couch, which is great. Um, if you have help, then you do what you need to do. But the recliner for me was best. And I had to use a lift recliner because I'm so short. I didn't want to risk me trying to get up out of there. And let's face it. I mean, at 4 a.m. in the morning, 3 a.m. in the morning, you know, <laughs> you're not trying to call somebody for help to get to the bathroom. So the lift recliner was best for me. But I was able to keep my independence a little bit, too. Um, you are able to walk around. You're able to make you some food, stuff like that. Your back may be sore, but you just lean on something and you do what you need to do. Um, you're not handicapped. You just have to be careful. No twisting, turning, bending, period. Um, as far as the medications, um, about, I would say I was on the, the Percocets, Valium and Neurotin for at least a good, and I took them on time for at least that good week. After that week, I was pretty much off all the narcotics. Um, the only thing I still do take and I did take was Flexerol at that point. And that's just a muscle relaxer. Um, it helped a lot. Um, waist lipo sucks. <laughs> it really sucks. Um, at approximately about week two, I couldn't take it anymore. I had to have my husband massage my back with Arnica gel. Arnica gel. Arnica gel. <laughs> because you get knots back there and stuff like that. And him massaging it, it it. I'm not going to say hurt, but it was uncomfortable, but it felt so good in the same sentence and even better once um, he was finished and I got to sit down and I was really relaxed. So we pretty much did it at night so I could relax better. Um, waist lipo definitely, whoo, that still gives me trouble and I'm a month post-op. Post um, compression is your best friend. Compression, compression, compression. I'm not going to stress it enough. You'll hear a lot of ladies in the group, you'll hear a lot of people tell you compression is key. You need to compress. You compression is 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 definitely key. You need to compress. Compress, compress, compress. Have those garments on. Have your towels on. Compress. Um, that's the best way to get that swelling down. Swelling hurts. So compress. 
um, week four, yay, which is now. My towels are gone, so I did change my garments, and that was okay by Dr. Gray because everything was super big at that point. Also, at this point, or uh, I would say week two, I decided to pretty much dominantly change my entire eating habits. I really don't do any sodium. If so, it's very low. I mean, sodium is pretty much in anything, so it's pretty low at this point. I do um, green veggie and a protein. That's like my lunch and dinner. In between that, I do protein shakes. Um, mostly Premier Protein because it's the easiest thing to get. Um, but I do do protein shakes. And I, I just try to eat a little bit better now. Because I notice when I eat better, I feel better. Um, as far as my swelling, like I said, swelling hurts. The tightness in the swelling is what hurts. So I'm trying to eliminate that as best as possible. I am trying to eat, change the way that I eat now. Um, and I think... At that point, that's that's about all I have for you as far as surgery talk thus far. Um, if I can figure out some more things for you, I will. Um, I hope this helps you a little bit better. I am gonna do a video at the end of this one. I'm about to do it now, actually, where I'm gonna show you all how to uh how I put on my towels and how I was told to put on my towels. It may vary or change, um, depending on the procedures you have. But this is how I put on my towels. A lot of people have asked me also about my towels and, and the binder. So I'll do that. Peace. Okay, so week one. And first let me show you how long the towel is that I have. They're pretty long beach towels. And I don't know if you can see the actual length. But anyway, it's pretty long because it's about the length of me. <laughs> I'm short, but matter of fact, it's taller than me. So anyway, so first week that when I first came home with my towels, they were just folded in half the short way, this way here, like this. And then you can see, and then you take it and we folded it this way. We folded it this way then. And that's two tiles that I have in one. So you see how thick it is? And then this is it. Folded a little bit on, because I'm short. I have a short torso. So we folded a little bit here. So basically how we were told for me and our my surgery, it goes from here to your pelvis. Here to your pelvis. The whole abdomen from incision to incision. Diaphragm to pelvis basically so that's my fold there and that's what we did and I, I'm showing you now with my recovery fry hat on so you can see how I had to end up doing it by myself when I didn't have help so I would take it put it like that stuff it this side on in there to the back which hey I'm not saying it was easy it was not an easy process but you got to do what you got to do because if not you're going to be relying on somebody for 24 7 and that's not cool not all the time not after a week like that's just a bit much so and then put it up and then see how it's holding it up there so this is why i did it like that and then get to this side so it's underneath my breast and at my pelvis and it is incision to incision and then you just make sure it's as flat as you can get it because when it you're gonna feel everything. Every uneven fold in there is gonna drive you crazy. So as you can see, see, there we are. And then I'll just tuck it, make sure it's at my pelvis line. See, it's under still under my breast, as you can see. It's nice and thick. And then you'll pull that, pull it, pull it here, try to zip it up. If you can't, then hold the bottom. Pull it. It actually has clamps too. I do. I was using the clamps, but I also have on my other garment, so that's the extra material under there. So, but as you can see, if I can do all this, then it still was way too big. But I will try to clip it real quick, just so I can get it up. So you can see, this is not real quick either. But so putting them in there and then see and then you go up 
then the, the clips are in my way, but see, there you go. It's incision to incision. I'm nice and protected in there. And then you'll take your binder here. This was what actual my actual medical binder here. And then, you know, you you don't you want to be tight enough that you have compression, but you don't want to kill your skin. So you don't want it way too tight, which is another reason why you have this kind of protecting your skin under there in the towels. So from there, because like I said, I was doing this part by myself sometimes. You just pull it, straighten it out, pull it, put this one over top. And that's how I did that. And this is how I walked around right here. Now I'm going to show you how I started after week two when everything, some of the swelling started going down and I noticed that it was my, it was way too big and I just wasn't getting enough compression in my back. My back was hurting me so bad I could cry. So I noticed I had to do something and I was like, listen, this is not it. So I would take this, see it was the short way. Then I would take it the long way. And sometimes I'll put three tiles just to make sure it was thick enough because it's the long way now. So I'll open it all the way up and fold it accordingly. Just like this. And I would use three tiles if, if need be. And I would take it around my back. Because like I said, with that waist lipo, whoo, very vigorous. So I will put it around my waist like this. And it's still a little long. So actually, I'm sorry. It's been a while, but not a while, but I folded it again a little bit down some more. like this and then take it around my back and I have a short torso so you have to do it you know according to how you are with your torso and your so as you can see it will be across my back just to give me some extra compression back there because it was serious y'all I was struggling <laughs> struggling bad and I would pull that kind of snug but not not tight and then stuff everything Push this on up and put myself on in here. See, like that. And make sure everything's in. Like I said, I was doing it by myself. So this is a good uh, video, I feel, because it'll show you how to pretty much do it yourself. You don't want to rely on somebody for everything. They're going to be like getting tired of you. Like, listen, now, I said I'll help you, but everything? No. So, that was that. Like I said, this was about week two, maybe two and a half a little bit. But it's a bulge right there. But that's that's just the, the towel rolled up. But only because I'm showing you real fast. But you put this back on. And now you have compression in your waist. And your tummy's nice and still secure. And there you go. That's for you people like me. We had waist lipo and you're dying because it's <laughs> waist lipo is no joke. Oh, I also had bra line lipo and that, that was a whole lot easier than the waist lipo, but waist lipo was, it was on another, on another level. So I'm going to get out of all this because it's a lot, but, um, I, so I hope this helped you guys with putting on your towels. Somebody had asked. A while back I get a lot of inboxes so I try to I do answer the, their questions but um I feel like you know <laughs> more than them would be asking the same question so and I've seen it a lot on his uh tummy tuck support group Dr. Michael Gray's tummy tuck support group on how to put on your towel so I wanted to uh come on and, and show you guys a way to put on your towels where you can do it yourself um, or you can have somebody else do it, especially if you're at about two weeks post-op. I wouldn't suggest, like I said, doing it that way um, one week post-op post -op because you want to protect this part of you as much as possible with your incisions, um, your sutures, and your stomach. Um, 
but by week two, two and a half, three weeks, um, my back was, was really, really, really killing me with the waist lipo. So that's something I did as the off office. I'm make sure that that's going to be okay for you and your surgery. That's just how I had to relieve my pain for, uh, my back, um, which it was either my waist or my hips. I'm sorry. I had, I had both areas done waist. I had lipo to my bra line, my waist and my hips. So my back was killing me to where I couldn't even stand up straight because at some point I had that much swelling in my back to where if I stood up, it, it just was unbearable. So I had to try to get that swelling down somehow. And that's what, um, I chose to do to try to get that, to get that down, um, without, with, with still maintaining, uh, having my binder on and my towels on and stuff and not putting extra stuff on that that's not permitted. So, um, I hope this helps you guys. Uh, this is Miss Candy Rain and I'm officially out. Um, just trying to give you guys some information. Once again, like, share, subscribe, um, leave me some comments below. I love the comments. That's how I try to be as transparent as possible. That's how I try to answer and ask, uh, answer any of you guys' questions as far as what to do, what I do, um, to help myself out with this process. Once again, it's, 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 I haven't really been in any pain. I do believe that hyperbaric treatment, um, that I had pre I definitely, definitely, definitely help aid in my healing. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been pretty good. Like I said, and most people that do have it to me, um, also have good recoveries. So, um, I didn't feel like I needed it after recovery or I would have gotten it again. If I did, it is good. He does suggest you get one before two after. Um, but once I went to my first week post-op and I was healing really good. So that's why I didn't, um, plus the $195 and you know, it becomes kind of costly. So other than that, Miss Candy Rain, I'm out. Like, share, subscribe, hit that uh, notification bell. That way you will be notified. I'm going to have more videos coming. Um, as I always state, I'm definitely going to be doing uh, probably my six week update. Like I'll do another update on videos. If it's some questions that I didn't answer for you guys, I'll be doing my six week um, post-op whenever I go to do see Dr. Greg for my six weeks. Um, I will also come back on and give you how I'm doing um, when I start back work after eight weeks. So, um, and how that is for me as far as swelling and how I can try to maintain not swelling as much. Once again, I have a physical job, so this could be for you. If you have a physical job where you're going to be on your feet and you're working, I'm a, a postal carrier. So my job is very physical. I'll be on my feet and I will be working. So I'll let you know how that is working for me. Um, I also may do one on, um, uh, just on my nutrition and I'll definitely keep you guys, if that's something you're interested in as well as keeping your weight down, um, trying to, cause a lot of us go on to these, um, uh, surgeries and we're still kind of, you know, we're still heavy. So trying to get my weight down to where I want it, um, my weight to be, to be more comfortable in my own skin. Cause that's what it's about. That's why, Hey, that's why we have these surgeries. We want to feel comfortable and beautiful in our own skin. Not that we didn't before, but Hey, what's the act a little bit extra finesse to that. So, all right, peace out. See you later.